Dev, uh, one of my subscribers, one of my viewers, longtime viewer, great dedication from him. He asked me how to build Walking Tomb Drang, and I realized I've never done a guide on Walking Tomb Drang. Now, this is like, you, you can find so many guides on Walking Tomb Drang, but this is how I build him, and I build him to solo um, some of the dungeons here. The way that you want to build, if you're planning to use him for solo content, the way that you want to build Walking Tomb Drang is basically in region, uh, regeneration and immortal, or bolster if you have bolster, bolster is really good, but I don't really think it's better than regen because bolster only comes with a shield. And let me see if I can find bolster here. Bolster comes with a shield, right? A 30% ally protection shield and then it only heals by 10 percent whereas regen heals by 15 percent bolster is really good for pvp but walking tomb drain is basically basic basically basically going to be for pve content i do like using him in hydra but mostly he's just a solo god so this isn't the best built walking tomb drain again this is on my third account i just happen to be here because i'm about to do a shard pull video consider this like a champion guide sort of but not really uh i just wanted to do this real quick for him attacks one enemy twice instantly activating hp burns which he places with his a2 when you book it 100 percent chance three turn cooldown irresistible this debuff cannot be resisted you do not need accuracy hp based champion you also do not need accuracy for the a1 this was something that dev who inspired me encouraged me to do this um asked me do you need accuracy to activate HP burns? No, you don't. It just does it, which is pretty good, I think. Then this A3 is actually pretty useful too. In fact, on my main account, Walking Tomb Drang is part of my stage 30 Odin team, which uh, I'll link down below in case you haven't seen that, but I think I kind of skim over how to build Walking Tomb Drang there. I, I think I might show you my build there too, but basically this move gives your entire team a full heal because Walking Tomb Drang is always going to be the one with like the top health and it takes the top health person and feel uh, heal, heals the rest of the team. His passive, which I don't pay too much attention to, but it still does pretty well, reflects 30% of the damage this champion receives back to the attacker if this champion has 50% HP or more, which he does. So any little bit of extra help, especially if you're taking him into clan boss, if you're early on, or if you're going to Hydra with him, he's that's a good move to have, right? You want every little bit of damage you can get. Deals 30% more damage instead if this champion has less than 50%. But I don't really ever worry about him doing damage aside from doing HP burns. And that's basically it. Put emergency heal on him is because anytime a shield basically goes away on Walking Tomb Drang, he's going to heal. One star, it's only 3%, right? But 3% is, you know, you want every little bit that you can get. Then it's going to be 6%. Then it goes up to a whopping 9 and then 15% respectively, which is big heals, right? So we're going to switch this over to emergency heal. Then I'm going to show you guys the pieces of gear that we have. When it comes to hitting him out in regen and um, immortal, you're basically looking for speed and survivability stats, right? So what are we talking about survivability stats? We're looking for HP percent ascensions, HP percent defense percent, same thing with the chest. You're looking for those subbies up top. Speed, you want speed on speed. And the reason you want speed on somebody who is in a regen set, regen and immortal set, is because if your champion doesn't take any turns, they're not taking any heals, right? Because you have to take a turn in order to get a heal. Here are the pieces of um, jewelry here. HP, defense, pretty straightforward. Resistance is also uh, highly preferred. You can get away with something like defense or HP. It's really good to have that. Resistance is, it's sort of like personal preference, I think at this point. If you're gonna take them into Hydra, take him into Hydra, you're going to want some resistance. So definitely consider taking resistance but then again uh, it doesn't really matter too much hp or defense i totally forgot to put a blood shield ring on him so make sure that if you're going to take emergency heal put a blood a blood 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 shield ring on him of course you can ascend all of these that's pretty good again he doesn't need accuracy here are the total stats we're approaching 100k right ideally we would have 100k there's still room for me to reach 100k with ascensions 
reworking everything and so on and so forth with enchantments, switching out certain pieces of gear because some of the rolls weren't cool on that one. Now, 3200 defense is not exactly ideal. I would prefer to have something closer to 4000, but 3500 I think is going to be solid enough, right? Because you can have a lot of HP, but if you don't have enough defense to counter, uh, you're just going to be getting chunked away and you're not going to survive. If you're wondering, okay, well, Burrito, I don't have end game gear. What are some numbers I should be looking for? I don't ever really give a baseline number or something to strive for. Like I can give you ideas like, I don't know, like if you're early game, aim for like 40, 50K. If you are mid game, 60, 70K. If you're late game, 80, 90K, right? And then if you're looking for defense, you know, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, you know, it just kind of increments depending on where you are. It's not so important that you should be looking for specific numbers. It's important that you're looking for the priority stats to focus on, right? So the next time you build a champion who is like Walking Tomb Drang, for an example, like Theodore or Artak, you know, if you can understand the function, the form, and the goal, you don't have to wonder or watch a content creator like me. You will just know, okay, uh, anytime I need a solo god, we're looking for survivability stats, HP, defense, prioritize that the best you can do while still balancing speed, right? So again, we're also trying to get as much speed as we can. So we're going 258 here. Pretty good, right? For support champions, 240 is kind of like the minimum. And so if you're looking on the Hell Hades optimizer, what you can do is just type in or click the um, survivability preset and that's going to be a really good option too if you if you're on pc but if not you know this is totally fine resistance i don't really have a resistance parameter it's just if i can get it i can get it it's kind of like a third option for me a third priority but i would definitely focus on these here hp defense and then speed uh, if you want to get a little extra crit damage crit rate on him like you, you can build him for some direct damage but his damage is coming from his HP, and you don't need accuracy, it just happens to show up there. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy <laughs> these masteries. I'm going to show you guys how I have mine built, so just know that this is how I have mine built, but you don't have to build it this way. You could look up a, like a Hell Hades, and I would actually trust other content creators before you trust me, but I'm going to explain why I have each of these. So if you don't want to hear why I have all of these, then just skip a little bit forward. We're taking extra resistance because why not? We're taking uh, improved parry because this is going to decrease the damage we receive based off of crit hits. And oftentimes crit hits are the ones that hit really hard and end up killing us. So if we can mitigate that by 8%, that's a lot better in my opinion than taking an AOE um, 5%. You know, we, we, it's, it's more important to get uh, protection against crit hits, especially if not every hit that you're going up against is an AOE move, right? Rejuvenation, anytime receive a heal or a shield, it's going to increase that amount by 5%. And then we're taking Resurgent to have a chance to remove a random debuff. We're taking Delay Death for some damage mitigation over the long haul. We're taking Retribution to have a chance to counter by uh, 50%, right? That That's a 50% chance to counter. And counters are... Generally speaking, normally always good, except for very specific instances like in Hydro when you're going up against the head that puts up the poison clouds and you counterattack that head, but you want that head to stay burned so you can kill that head so that the poison clouds go away. But, you know, I, I still prefer to have this on for other content because if you can tick those HP burns off, it's a lot better to do so. And the cool, things about, uh, the cool thing about HP burn is that it spreads to all enemies. You don't have to worry about only one enemy receiving it. The entire team is going to receive uh, damage from the HP burns. It's a good way to kill Spider too. And then also take Wisdom of Battle to have a chance to place block debuff whenever Walking Tomb Drang WTD receives any of these debuffs. Over on this side, we're taking... Uh, over on... Over on this side, we're taking extra HP. And do you guys know this? If um, this buff works when Walking Tomb Drang does damage and puts a shield on himself with a blood shield ring. Do you know if this this counts? Like, do we increase the value of that shield? I mean, it doesn't matter too much, but I'm curious. Or is it shields only done 
buy skills. We're also taking Healing Savior because there's not really anything else we can get from here. We don't need accuracy and we don't really need rapid response since we're not taking or we're not we're not putting any buffs up. You could also go the other route here and take this way, go this way for Arcane Celerity, but I just didn't. Um, Cycle of Magic, obviously to have a chance to cool down your HP burns or your equalizer skill, Lore of Steel for some extra stats. Spirit Haste is also really important for solo content because you're going to be going in with food and every time they die, Walking Tomb Drain goes faster. Definitely something that you want, uh, almost imperative, so pay attention to that. Master Hexer to increase the duration, chance to increase the duration of HP burns. And then you can either go high res, you could also take extra defense, uh, you could also take extra HP. I took increased turn meter fill rate by 2.5 for each active debuff cast by this champion. He's always placing HP burns. So, you know, a little bit of turn meter fill uh, goes a long way, I think. Uh, you could also take timely intervention if, if you want to, but it's not really the ideal situation there. One cool thing to note is that Rathalos and WTD actually pair well with each other because of his irresistible HP burns and Rathalos getting an increase to, um, you know, his uh, performance when the enemy has HP burns. It's not exactly ideal because he does activate the HP burns, which means that he doesn't have, or Rathalos won't have a chance to always um, perform with HP burns, kind of like Artek. But, you know, it, it's still something. Hard Ice Golem, this is probably where many of you might want to use Walking Tomb Drang. Now, ignore Marishka, but this is Hard Ice Golem 10. Elva is here to basically do the cleanse for survivability, for revives, for heals. Now, Artak and WTD both can solo Ice Golem by themselves, but with the gear that I have currently to spare to, or, well, just the gear that I have on this third account, um, we're not really able to have either or do it by themselves. Now, our attack is extremely strong on my main account. I actually, on both of my main and my first alt account, uh, our attack is my main hard ice golem uh, solower. He's just that awesome. But uh, we have Walking Tomb Drang here because he also provides support in terms of the equalizing HP. But as you can see, HP burns are so effective here and as you can see that he just did the uh, HP balance move. He didn't really need it, but sometimes, you know, RNG happens and Walking Tomb Drang is here to uh, help stabilize the situation here. In fact, you can see that when it comes to the actual runs, Drang is doing a good chunk of the damage here. But of course you don't have to, uh, you know, do stage 10, you could drop down to uh, even hard Ice Golem 1 is a lot better than doing any of the uh, normal stages if you can manage it. but. You know, it's it's something to work towards. Gear is is always uh, something hard to, to deal with. You could also put him in your spider team. And for this spider team, I'm basically burning and using um, uh, enemy max HP moves. And the way it works is uh, it's a little bit out of order because I recently rebuilt Nut. But you basically want to do your HP burns and then your Sishias are going to do the decrease defense and weaken and then also do a little bit of HP burning, killing all of the spiders and Royal Guard is there to clean the entire team up. And of course, you see Walking Tomb Drang did a good chunk of the damage because uh, it all kind of just was credited to him. The damage was credited to him. So he has application in the Ice Golem. He's got application in the Spider's Den. Um, here, uh, I don't use Walking Tomb Drang here. I mean, I, I'm not going to build a third team for, for Odin. Uh, I'm just going to, you know, sit at 20 and call it a day. That's just the way it is. Um, th this is a, I would consider this to be like a, a late game account. Faction Wars, obviously, he's going to have a lot of play there. Dragon Air, I mean, not Dragon Air, Dragon's Lair. I don't really use him there. Phantom Shogun, maybe, you know what I mean? And then Sand Devil's Necropolis is also another place that you could use him. Now, I don't use him here. I've got this team going on. But if you were running the Aniri and Ninja combo, you could also run Aniri and Walking Tomb Drang because HP burns are a great way to deal with the um, Sand Devil. Just got to make sure that if you're going to be doing this, you want to have Aniri in position leader and you want Walking Tomb Drang or whoever your damage dealer is going to be in position number um, one. You could also throw in some food here if you wanted to, just, you know, 
just to level up some champions at the same time, and this is going to work just fine. Granted, this is a Neri with uh, a six-star blessing, so keep that in mind. But as you can see, uh, emergency heal is popping off for Walking Tomb Drang, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. And then the uh, you know he's he's positive affinity, so that's another thing. The other thing that I forgot to mention here is. Uh, you have to turn off his... I'm seeing it right now. You have to actually set presets and you don't want to use his A3. You want to make sure he's only using his A2. So I think this is going to eventually do it, but it's probably going to be like a 40 minute run. So we're, we're not doing that. Um, but you guys get the point. These are my confessions. Just when I thought I said all I could say, my chick on